In fact, now we're probably joined by the biggest legend, joint biggest, because Usain Bolt's joining us a bit later on. I think that's fair. Italian Juve legend, superstar Alessandro Del Piero joins us. Hello, guys. How oh, are you? Oh, we're Hello. good. We're very well. What We were talking, myself and Benty, what do we call you? Alessandro? Yeah. What, Ale, De Ale, Ale. Alessandro, Alex. 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 Yeah. Alex. Okay. Alex, Alex to his friends. Alex. <laughs> Mi Mr. Del Piero. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We're huge fans. Not just me, but the whole team, everyone listening, the millions of people around the world listening on TalkSport. So it's so kind that you've joined us this afternoon. Firstly, how are you? How's training been? Everything's great. I mean, just landed today. So I joined you guys uh, uh, just for a few hours now. Uh, but we had a good training session, you know? I mean, I had fun. I, not all of us. <laughs> That's aimed at me, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know me so well already. Thanks so much. Well, so are you are you okay for Sunday? Um, if I get the call, yeah, I go there on crutches. I see that Lee Max got his it's like Robocop knees on. I'm not quite sure what that is, but from my perspective, I was saying to Benny, it's great me being close to superstars like you seeing how you know you control the ball and your touch and so on you you obviously never lose it do you still keep your you obviously do keep yourself relatively fit do you play a lot now still yeah i play uh, and i try to train and keep myself you know up uh, it's uh, it's a different world when you finish uh, playing football i mean it's uh, you're jumping really in a new life but uh, my kids keep me busy you know i have three of them so going up and down with them and follow them as much as i can plus i'm doing some stuff uh, around the world it's always good, you know, because I love flying, travel, and find new people, and you know, discover new cultures, and share this kind of experience. That's why for me this one is huge. I mean, because uh, yeah, you can meet my oldest friends, you know, all the teammates, uh, people that you, you know, faced during your career. But then on the other side, you meet a lot of other influent people like you guys and everybody so it's it's good to exchange this kind of uh, knowledge it doesn't matter where it come from it's important to have a conversation on that do you think it's amazing that as you said i mean you played at the highest level italy Juventus, and we'll talk about that a little bit later but when you play in these charity games everything is all fun and games at first and then the moment the whistle goes competitive of course of course it's uh the competition, you know, take you take you there <laughs> at the end, you know. You smile, you, you lead, you know, the first two passes maybe is the easiest one. And then the, the only problem is mine still go very fast, like before. Yeah. But it didn't <laughs> respond in the same way. <laughs> That's the problem. I know what you mean, but I don't have either of those. <laughs> They've never synced up. That's been the problem. So I will not complain then. <laughs> Do you, what's, the, what's the one thing you miss from, from playing? Because... Um, a lot of ex-footballers that I speak to, they tell me it's the dressing room, the banter, their pals. Is it? Is it that with you? Yeah, of course, I mean because they become like a family. But and that the preparation for for the game and everything is a huge thing, you know, going through the trainings and through fears and 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 things that you say and you exchange with your teammates as well and the uh, the coaching stuff. But then much more. I mean, you know, walking to the field, you know. I was at the Champions League final, you know, commentating a week ago. You know, that was such an incredible environment. Yeah. You know, all the all the world is watching you, and you play for the big trophy, and you walk inside the field just for the training, uh, for the warm up. It's this is a special era, uh, and that was so. That's why I want to walk inside, but I couldn't. <laughs> If I, Obviously, Alessandro's talking about Champions League, uh, League Cup, same thing. <laughs> Champions League. <laughs> did, I think you played in that. You're on the bench. For your, do you? Um, do you have? If I walked into your house, would I know you're a footballer? Because a lot of footballers, they put all their stuff away. Yeah, because my kids, all all of them play football, including my daughter. So you can literally see boots and football and balls everywhere. Shirts. Old shirts, yeah, yes. some shirts as well. They 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 love to have some collection. They have a favorite players, so yeah, also also shirts. Yeah, you, sorry, you because you won a lot of trophies for obviously Juventus. I think six Serie A titles. Do you, where do you keep all your memorabilia? Is that in the house or is it a museum? No, no, I don't have. Uh I don't have a memorabilia room or something like this. Where's your World Cup medal? That, that's it's uh, in the safe. Uh, okay. In, in my, of course, uh, but but uh, not in my house. And shirts that you played in, like the World Cup final shirt. Yeah, I have all of them. You got okay, yeah, good. I, I didn't say that I didn't collect. Oh, okay. But uh, I don't show uh, it. Uh, <laughs> I don't like you know having a room with a World Cup, a Champions League, and. Uh, wow. Well, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I think Ben is 
little boy's got your League Cup winner's medal, yeah, right? Yeah, in the toilet, in his, in his, <laughs> in his bathroom. <laughs> but when your kids are different, yeah, it's good when your kids. I, when I, if you walk inside my, my first home, when my still my mom live in the little town in northeast of Italy, you you will see three cups. But because I, it's not uh, because I play football, but because I play, how do you call it in English, the. Oh, Boche. balls? Balls. Yeah. You know, I won three times the first play in my beach side. Yeah. Yeah, so I, that was my first trophy. Wow. And wow. That, How old were you? They're still there. I was seven, eight, and nine years old. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's so good. So when you go to That's vacation, nice. you know, we go to vacation, you go in your beach uh, place, and they have a competition, so I won that one. All of three are still there. Okay, we won't take you out of that. All right? No, okay. they're, they're, they're going to stay there. I guess that's they're nice. the first one. Nice. You know? Let me talk to you about Italy. We've got the Euros around the corner. Yeah. What do you? We were talking actually before you came over. We we're talking about the Italian side. It's th this. This sounds like an insult, but it's not. It's a sort of backhanded compliment. Italy have had some of the greatest international sides that we've ever seen. This current one isn't up there. I don't think with the greatest. How do you rate their chances at this year's Euros? With Italy, you need to put a huge question mark in, in what's going to happen. You, you can't predict at all, because it's also the history that we saw in the last eight years. You know, imagine we missed two World Cup in, in four years. Yeah. I mean, the last five years, okay? We missed two World Cup in, in between. We won the Euro. How? Yeah. <laughs> and even before that Euro, when you watch the team, you say, well, yeah, it's a good team. Maybe if they reach a quarter final or semi final, it's still a good result. This is the feeling that we had in Italy before that Euro. And it's probably the same feeling that we have now because of what you say, because, you know, there's apparently much better teams, you know, thinking about England and France and Spain and Portugal. I mean, as a single player, they have. They have probably more quality than us. But because of all of this, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's, that's why it's a question mark. If, because we, as Italian, if we find that chemistry between each other, like what happened four years ago, uh, then we become very dangerous because we still know how to do things. We still know how to defend. Our goalkeeper is amazing. So we can manage things, you know, and take, especially in the game when you are win or go home, that kind of feeling has become also mindset. And in that one, we're still good. How, how was the, inter the Italian national team viewed and the manager? Because as you said there, he wins the Euros, which is a big thing, then doesn't qualify for the World Cup, but then has just now qualified for the, for the European Championships. Are the Italian fans happy with the national team? Are they not? Do they like the manager? Or is it just... Well, we, have, uh, we changed the manager after yeah. missing the World Cup, so that's a big... It's a big thing, and, and the new ones, Paletti is everybody love him. I yeah. uh, appreciate that everybody knows that he's a really good coach, uh, and uh, that's why I, I was talking about chemistry, because uh, on 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 the field, say like this, we have a possibility. Uh, maybe not the best team, but you know, definitely a good environment. Everybody believe it, and good coaching stuff. So that's sometimes you know. Sometimes you go, you walk to the World Cup or you know Euros with the, with the wrong coach. Yeah. Uh, even if you have a better team, uh, mm. it's not gonna yeah. make it. <laughs> Do you know it's funny you say that because a lot of people say that about England, because yeah, I heard about that. You, yeah. you look at the players that England have got, the likes of Jude Bellingham, who you've seen a lot of uh, Phil Foden, good players, but there are sometimes question marks about the manager because that final against Italy, England go one nil up really early, don't really do anything else after that. Is it a little bit similar to that? Because we have a great team, but people are not sure about the manager. No, no, I'm not. I wasn't referring on that one, to be honest. I, I'm saying that it happened during the past, that even if you have the better team, but not that you have the best coach, mm. that you don't have the best coach, but sometimes things doesn't go in that way. And, and, you know, there's a match. And even with the best coach and with the best team, sometimes it didn't happen. The spark didn't... didn't Start mm. so, it's it's really because it's a one month tournament, guys. I mean, everything has to be f perfect in those yeah. days. It's not like a league that you can you know you have a couple of bad weeks and ah, we have time to 
to build back. Mm. No, no. It's got to happen. Yeah, it's bam, bam, bam. How do you then, and uh, the rest of the Italians, how do you view England's chances and England's team? Huge. Yeah? Huge. I think... Favourites? I think, uh, to be honest, I think France is a little bit above everybody. Mm -hmm. But then, on the second place, for sure, England. What are we doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> because I tell you, you why, because you face us in the Euro final. That's <laughs> the only thing that you did know. wrong, guys. And if the game's four minutes long, we win it. I uh, mean, but I was at the World Cup as well. Yeah, you played amazing against France in the semi-final. Mm -hmm. So it's missing a little part. And what uh, is that uh, part? Uh, well, in your opinion, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a combination of let's say stars. Okay, it's just to say something crazy because. You're doing great. You know, you got to the semi-final, the World Cup, and finally the Euros, okay? Mm -hmm. You have a great team, great environment, great, you know, history. You have all the quality on, on, to put on the field. But sometimes they didn't work. And it happened to me. I mean, I, we won the World Cup in 2006. After that, we missed two World Cup and two Euros. And if you see our first, first 30 players, not even 23, 30 players in Italy, everybody can play in every team on the first 11 easily. You're know, talking about strikers, uh, you know, Totti, me, Zaghi, Gilardino, <coughs> Tony, <laughs> uh, or midfielders, De Rossi, Pirlo. I mean, this guy can play easily on the first 11 in every team in those, in that Pirlo, and we, we arrive short. Let me ask you there, because one of the, um, one of the, I think the problems, Benty probably, and, and a lot of English fans listening to this, one of the problems I think we have, we have, Great, great players going forward. But our manager, Gareth Southgate, this is our opinion, puts too much emphasis on worrying about the opposition. And quite often we play with two holding midfielders. Kobe Manu might be playing next to Declan Rice. But we think we should play with Jude Bellingham and maybe Phil Foden and let them worry about us. Do you think that England's strength is in attack? Or do you think the right way to play is be a bit more defensive? I think you have a... In midfield and attack, the definitely amazing players. That's good. But you know, in order to find the balance, uh, at the end, only the coach can understand that balance. I can understand the player, you know, and and sometimes, yeah, sometimes you can do what, like you say, you know, let's be focused on the on the strikers and and the attackers and let them worry of us. And that's how we protect our our defense, right? Mm. But then you can choose, OK, in order to protect our defense, that is maybe the, the, the part that it is not the best, OK? Mm -hmm. OK, let's reinforce a little bit with some, some more guys, you know, that can defend the best. But that, that balance is, is everything. The balance is everything in the game. You know, it's, uh, it's very difficult to find. And, but again, Robin Shore, like you did in the last two competitions, it's, it's, uh, there's a little things. If you find those little things that I don't know actually because I'm not in the team, yeah, for us, for us was a, was a earthquake that happened around us. Yeah. Mm. That created a, a, a magical chemistry and created a, a solid group. Not that we weren't solid, but an incredible solid group that we can play against even. 20 players on the other team, they're not going to beat us. Maybe we don't win, but they're not going to beat us. <laughs> that is a strain. Yeah. It's a big strain when you have that kind of self uh, conviction that nobody can beat you. It's a lot. Who do you think is England's most important player or most dangerous? Who's the ones that Italians look at and go, he's the best? Well, for what, for what happened the last season, for sure, Bellingham and Foden. Are the two guys that are on fire now? Definitely. Even Harry Kane. I mean, he scored a lot of goals. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, maybe those three. Rice did amazing. I mean, to be honest, all the players did a good season. Yeah. There's no one that came from a bad season. Yeah. If I remember well. Who's gonna win the Euros? <laughs> Not Italy, no. <laughs> 
can you imagine another, another <laughs> final Italy against England? Oh. No. <laughs> no, I really can't. <laughs> hey, listen, thank you so much for your time. Before I, I let you go, I'm just curious, when you look back at your career, any regrets that you didn't play in the Premier League? No regrets, because uh, everything that I choose during my career, I, I have no regrets, including going relegation with Juventus. That was a hard choice, and I'm still happy that I made it, because I truly believe in one way, and that's still my way. But all the time that I came to play here, guys, I mean, it was such a great atmosphere. I mean... Do you ever come close to signing for a club? Yeah, it happened. Who was that? It happened. Uh, with Newcastle and, and United, and okay. Man United, yeah. And why didn't it happen at either? Uh, <laughs> you can tell us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, his mic's not working. Does okay, it, what? <laughs> just get, give me one little snippet. Just one little snippet. I'm a, I'm a United fan. No, Manchester it, United. it didn't happen because at the end, Juve, I was captain of Juve. I was... Everything for me, Juve was everything. You know, I was a Juve fan from the beginning of when I was a young kid. I mean, when I, when I found uh, a situation that is nice for me, well, I stay. I wasn't looking, you know, for more money or more things. They give me a good amount of money. I was happy in Torino and I became a captain. I spent 19 years. Yeah. We go through everything from the. Paradise till the hell, and and I'm happy about that. It's a it's a, it's a unique story. Yeah, it's a new journey. Yeah, of course, I would love uh, look in the past. You know, have a chance to play here. I mean, I always enjoy to play here, mm. guys. Definitely. That's nice. But it didn't happen, and so. Okay. Uh, last question, and then I'll let you go. Your old club. Another question. No, no, hey. How many times are you going to say hey, that question? Get, <laughs> I get paid by the question. Okay. I've got kids to feed, right? But so don't let's ask make this. a ping pong. I, yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> but don't ask this. They can't have dessert. All right? Um, your old club, Juve, are looking for a manager at the moment. deserby has been linked to them. Are you a fan of his? Who do you think should get that gig? Well, it was pretty close with Thiago Mota. And then, mm. well, let's see. I still believe they're going to go with him. Probably. But I have no clue. Okay. I'm finishing the license coach this month, by the way. You? Okay. Yeah. So? Uh, just. Is that where you want to go? Make another question? Make another question. No, do you it's, want, it's, do you, it's part of the same question. Do you, do you want to it's part of the same question. No, make another yeah. one. Otherwise, they're going to make your money. Subsection B of that first <laughs> question. Would you take. You want to get into management? Uh, maybe I'm thinking. I'm finishing the, the license course this yeah. month, or June, and then uh, then I'm gonna play in something. You want to take one year to, in order to play and to see my stuff and everything, but uh, it's not still not my priority to be okay. honest. I you didn't manager decide. Though? I still didn't even <laughs> I didn't decide. <laughs> so I know that my English is no good, but what's wrong with you guys? Just curious. Not him. You know? Just curious. <laughs> Just questions. Because question. people love hearing about you. <laughs> it's complimentary. Thank no, you for coming know. on. Listen, we're going to keep you for two more hours. Okay. All right? <laughs> if I could, I would. You know that. Yeah. I feel that we've got a bond here now. If I could, I would stay. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are, so, uh, you know you're a legend, a superstar, but we much. really appreciate that. We really Thank do. You. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.